Uh, my name is Cesar Rios. I'm with SCORE Industries, and I absolutely love what I do. I was born into zero waste, I, th I think you could probably say, when um, my dad started his uh, construction company in about 1972. And uh, ever since then, I've just been involved in trash my whole life. I know a lot about concrete because when I was a kid and I misbehaved, I used to have to go pick concrete with my dad. <laughs> so it was devastating, but it taught me a lot. You know, it taught me to be responsible, and it taught me how to deal with a lot of people. Um, I speak Spanish. I know I probably don't look like I speak Spanish, but my dad was born and raised in, in Zacatecas, Nochisclan, so that makes me a minority. <laughs> so you see the facts here. We got um, a lot of material that's being used every single day in, in you know, especially in, in, in concrete. It's also a, a significant source of greenhouse gases and emissions. 5% of the global uh, anthropogenic emissions of carbon dioxide. Okay, zero waste concrete. Research and innovators are exploring greening concrete. Um, reducing the amount of waste concrete in construction sites. I was an expert at that, especially when I had to go out there and do it myself. A lot of manpower behind that. Recycling concrete on site, very easy if you know what you're doing. You collect the material, take it to a, a location, you put it through the machine, recycle it, and reuse it back on site. The separation, again, a lot of equipment, manpower, communication. Um, if you can't get it all there, then you take it back to a processing facility, which we own and operate in Bloomington, California. Um, you take it back there, do some more processing, take it down to a uh, recycler that turns it into a class three base. If not, then it goes into, um, you know, some people just take it to a, what they call a, uh, inert landfill. This is true, the Netherlands and, and a lot of these California, a lot of the states in the in, uh, United States are recycling concrete in large amounts because obviously you could you know, recycle it, break it back down and make it into that class, three, uh, class two base. Yeah, so Cal Green is going 65%, which is really cool because when I started this, it was at 50%. And I'm like, super excited it's going to 65. I think it should be at 96, because that's where I'm at. <laughs> and it's really not that difficult to do, knowing how to do it and how to communicate with the people with the right equipment. It's totally possible. I do it every single day um, with my customers. I, uh, um, you know, we sit down with them. We share the ideas and methods with them. Um, we, you know, pick leaders in, in, in the construction sites, or if it's gonna be a specific project at a uh, school district or DC center, um, you know, just finding the right people that have their heart in it, you know, that's real important. There's a little passion behind this stuff. Putting uh, signage up, uh, knowing how to direct material. Finding the, uh, the, the right people is, I, I can't say that enough, it's super important. And speaking the language is super important too because when you find that right person, it just clicks, it just happens. You know, there's just not, there's no effort behind it and it's just it's a lot of fun. Zero waste is our philosophy. I mean, we, that's what I talk every single day. Uh, people don't believe it could be done. I can. I do it. I have a lot of good people around me that help me get to, the, to my goals every single day. So if you guys ever want to come visit me down in my facility, you guys are more than welcome to come down there and check it out because I'm actually doing it with my guys on the floor, picking materials, you know, finding new markets, having fun doing that too, creating new markets. That's a lot of fun too and just connecting with people, you know, just talking to them, asking them about what they want, what they're doing with it, what, you know, their ideas, getting creative, being, using your imagination, you know, that's, that's, for me, that's my big part of my success, is just being able to get, you know, creative with people. Going into the history, like I was touching earlier, you know, my, my dad and my grandpa started a construction cleanup in the 70s. They're the ones that actually pioneered construction cleanup. It wasn't a sexy thing to do for like a long time because <laughs> you know you had to be out there working in the sun all the time and but you know it slowly but surely it's kind of it's kind of made its way to the you know to the forefront where now I'm able to speak in front of you guys and let you know you know there's a lot of people out there that are doing this every single day and a lot of these people that are doing it every single day you know they don't speak English you know they they work really hard what they do that, that's really critical when, when it comes to getting everything done the right way on the ground level is, you know, you, you have to, first you have to know the demands that that, that on-site, that on-site, the super tenant is, 
is trying to achieve, make sure that everything gets recycled now. So it's like on top of building something, everything has to get recycled, and it's, it's, it's a lot of work. So that's where I really put a lot of emphasis on is really alleviating that on-site superintendent or management when I come to their projects because, you know, I, I go down and I, I talk to my people in Espanol, <laughs> and um, it makes things a lot easier. Um, and like I said, it's fun. And, you know, we just, uh, uh, that's really where we came from. You know, we really just started down um, picking up trash as kids and just taking it back to the facility and, and getting creative with the materials. One cool story would, was that um, we, we used to get the, the wood and, and cut it to sizes for, for pallet companies. <clears throat> Not knowing that it was like gonna make us a lot of money, it was just obvious, you know? And that was in the, in the 90s. I came to realize that the work is easy, but you know, politics could be a little difficult sometimes. But I'm okay with that. It's, in, you know, it's just another, another obstacle that makes it a lot more fun to, to do what we do to get zero waste, to show people that, you know, it is possible. And if you really want to do it, you just, you know, got to have your heart in it. These are the four CD methods that uh, SCORE lives by. On-site source separation, like I was mentioning. Transporting the material. We always want to get it separated as much as possible on-site. It's very important. If not, you take the material back to the facility and you do as much more recycling or recovery as you can. And of course, none of this is actually real unless you measure it and you put that in a summer report. I like to make it super easy because everything's super easy and simple is genius. That's my, that's how I think. <laughs> that all gets turned into the customer, puts them in compliance, everybody's happy, and we just move forward. Zero waste, the future is zero waste. Well, it's, it's every day. Uh, you know, it's, it's right now, you know. Um, LEED, Cal Green, U.S. Zero Waste, you know, um, all this, the conversation, um, doing, you know, the things that are uh, um, important for, for our kids. I really believe that a lot. I believe that um, if we start this at home and you take this to the business, it'll translate, over, translate to, the, to our children. You know, I have a huge passion for the children. My next business venture is to get into school districts. I already have one right now with Riverside School District where I've done a lot of cool things with the kids. So that's my next goal is to move out of, well, I want to stay in construction because that's where my heart is, but you know, little by little get into other sectors where I think I could have an impact with the kids. That's my cousin right there. <laughs> Again, he's you know, in, the, in the business too with us. And we've, been, I've, we've been doing this since we're in diapers, you know? It hasn't been easy, it hasn't been, you know, all better roses, you know, going through this journey when, you know, you start doing construction cleanup and you start to see the laws come down and, and you try to improve on the stuff that's, you know, been going on for the last 50, 60 years. But, you know, we, we, we maneuver around it. We work with a lot of cities. That's real important that we have that communication with cities. Some cities are very open to it because, you know, everybody has their environmental departments. We're looking to get into other sectors. We just opened up a, a plastic uh, recycling facility in TJ. Uh, right now we're focusing on uh, PET, a lot of PET. Especially right now with the green fence in China, it's not easy. It's not easy to move materials anymore because we're so passionate about what we do, we decided to compete against China. So we want, we opened up our own recycling facility down in TJ, where we're, getting, where we're recycling all PET materials and turning those back into clamshells and other types of uh, plastic. We have other things we're looking into. Organics, AB 1826, that is really interesting. We do have some people from Europe that came down from Italy and they swear that they could dry this material. It doesn't matter what it is, they're making it into perquettes. And once you make it into a briquette, it's engineered fuel, and which now makes it into a uh, you know, biofuel. So those are things we're, we're looking at too. 